Thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm your host, Daniel Davis, and today it's time to talk about health, especially coming up here in the holidays as we tend to move into what I would call gluttonous overload. Well, a lot of times it could be a definition of between what you eat, what you're taking in from the environment, and probably the way you think about the way your life is going that causes you to feel ill and diseased and depressed and all those things that tend to come with the holidays. Well, we thought we'd send you a special gift here today and talk about health. And what is it? Is it particularly a choice? Is it something that just happens to us? And if something happens, is it something that we can move away from in a traditional sense or an untraditional sense? Joining us here, we've had on the program before, is an international recognized leader in the emerging field of optimal health maintenance. He's also the chairman and CEO of Beyond Health Corporation. He's here to talk with us today about his book, Never Be Sick Again, One Disease, Two Causes, and Six Pathways. And our guest joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program is Raymond Francis. And Raymond, thank you for joining us here on the program today. Well, thank you once again for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you. You bet. Now, talk to us, uh, or give our listeners again a background of, of who you are and how you came to discover uh, the way that you approach health and wellness. Well, in a nutshell, uh, I'm a chemist by training. I'm a graduate of MIT. Uh, and uh, I took very ill. Uh, my death was a medical certainty. Uh, and at the last moment, uh, I had to use my own knowledge of biochemistry to save my life. And then it took me two years of hard work and learning to restore myself to where I could function once again. And all of that was a wake-up call. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, As almost, always is for people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> almost dying changes your life. <laughs> and uh, after that, it really caught my attention. I started asking questions like, uh, what is health? Uh, what is disease? Why do people get sick? How do you get sick? Uh, I started thinking in, in scientific terms of, you know, what do you have to do? Here you have a healthy person. What do you have to do at the molecular level, at the cellular level, to make a healthy person a sick person? And if they're sick, what do you have to do again at the molecular level, the cellular level, to restore them to, to good health? And I started getting answers to those questions, and, and the answer just blew me away. You know, they were, they were mm-hmm. so profound, and uh, I wasn't more than six months into this before I realized that modern medicine didn't work, <laughs> and uh, and that's why we're all sick. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's so far behind the science that uh, it, it, medicine has become irrelevant at this point uh, uh, because it is just so far behind the science. So the science is there. The science is moving at the speed of a rocket ship. Uh, medicine is moving at the speed of a snail. And, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and each year it, it gets further and further and further behind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, to the point where a few years ago the National Academy of Sciences came out and said that uh, even if we tweak modern medicine, uh, there's no way that we can bring it up to date. We, we've really got to take the medicine that we have and discard it and start over again. Well, fortunately, we have the knowledge to start over again. I mean, the knowledge is there. The science mm-hmm. is there. Uh, and as a scientist, it, it pains me to see that, um, you know, here we have more than, more than three out of four Americans have a diagnosable chronic disease. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, the, and the health of the country uh, is getting worse. I mean, our children are now so sick that the medical journals are saying that life expectancy in America is going to start turning down because our young people are so sick they're not going to live as long as their parents. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, so that's the situation we're in, and and it's tragic, and it doesn't have to be that way because the human body is designed to be healthy. Uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, we're interfering with it. We're making it unhealthy, and uh, we are a sick population. We're getting sicker every year. Uh, we're now number 37 in the world. We spend more money on health than any nation on earth. In fact, twice as much is the next competitor. Wow. And, and we're number 37 in the world in terms of overall health. Uh, and it's declining where we're going to be going downhill. We're number 48 in the world uh, uh, in terms of life expectancy, uh, and it's getting worse every year, we, you know, and it's going to start to turn mm-hmm. down. So we have to do something about this as a nation, uh, and really it starts with the individual. Health is an individual responsibility, 
Uh, and all you need to do is educate yourself so you can you can take that responsibility and run with it. And, and that's why I wrote Never Be Sick Again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to take the essence of what people need to know and put it in one place where anybody could read it and, and essentially know all the things they need to know to stay healthy. And, and that's what it is. I, it, it's really Never Be Sick Again is, is health in one lesson. You, you read one book and you have the whole enchilada. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if you want to read more books, sure. But here's one book that will teach you everything you need to know. Well, what's really fascinating, too, is in America, our approach to health care, and it seems that every time a new nominee comes up for an election for the uh, place of president of the United States, one of the big things they have up there as part of their speech is, is health care. And uh, here we have newly elected President Barack Obama, talking about getting universal health care for everybody right. okay so it's sort of like here's the image that i have with something like that it's saying each and every person in america is going to have essentially their own body shop and we take a look at health as though we go about our day doing whatever it is that we do and then when things start to go awry then we count on being able to go to the doctor patch up the symptom, and then go about our day the same way that we were going before now. Right. In your book, Never Be Sick Again, you have some great stories in here. And one of the more interesting ones, and this is something that anybody out there listening can do right at this moment, uh, is that you were talking about a gentleman who had been suffering from depression for nearly 10 years. Now talk about that story a little bit and how you were able to assess what the cause was because typically what happens is, oh, I see a commercial or I'll read an article, I believe I have depression. Well, there just happens to be a solution, which is a drug. So (laughs) you add that on top of what you already have, and to me it seems that it just gets worse. So let's talk about that story and and how we went about that. What what, what we're doing, you know, what medicine does, and you pointed out already, it treats Mm -hmm. symptoms. So here's a man who had the symptoms of depression, uh, he was suicidal. I mean, he was really unable to do anything of any any meaningful any meaningful work at all. Um, he was acting out to the point where um, his family left him. Uh, he was a very serious situation. He was a very wealthy man, by the way, uh, and he had you know the best that medical science had to offer, and yet he remained sick. Uh, what we have to understand is that. Modern medicine does not look at the causes of disease. What they do is they look at the symptoms, and then they treat the symptoms with toxic drugs and with surgery. Uh, that, that, that's not a winning strategy. Uh, a winning strategy is saying, hey, what is the cause? And let's eliminate the cause. And, and in his case, the cause was he was exposed to too much mercury, and, uh, and once we removed the mercury... He, uh, he became a normal person once again. So always, always address the causes of disease and not the symptoms, and yet that's what we do. I mean, I'm writing a, bo- uh, a brand new book now, and I'm working on it. It's on how to cure cancer. Mm-hmm. And what do we do with cancer? We treat the symptoms. You know, a tumor is a symptom. And and what we do is we say, okay, let's take this tumor out. Let's chop you up into pieces. Let's take this tumor out, or or let's burn it with radiation, mm. or or let's poison it with chemotherapy. Mm. Well, I got to tell you, most cancer patients in America uh, die from chemotherapy. They don't die from the cancer. They die right. from chemotherapy, mm-hmm. uh, and it doesn't work. So none of these treatments really work because why? The tumor is a symptom of the disease. The disease, the malfunctioning cells are malfunctioning because of deficiency and toxicity at the cellular level. That's what you have to address. When you do that, the cancer simply goes away all by itself. Mm-hmm. And uh, and when that happens, you know, doctors call 
to call that spontaneous remission, you know. Right. <laughs> it's, it's something that nobody America understands, you know. It's God did it, you know. It's, yeah. uh, and nobody understands it. Uh, and they write it up in the medical journals, you know, spontaneous remission. Well, it's not spontaneous remission. Mm-hmm. It's addressing the causes of the cancer. And when you do that, it just goes away mm-hmm. all by itself. You know, it's amazing, too, because I know we'll get into this uh, as we continue the show here, is uh, when we talk about the genetic pathway of diseases, uh, the, there are the, the uh, six pathways. You know, you got the two causes, the one disease, two causes, six pathways. And it's been interesting that in the many years that I've been doing radio, and I have had the opportunity to speak with people who I would call cancer initiates. Now, and this comes from actually one of the guests I've had. That's an interesting point of view because they viewed cancer, for instance, as one of those diseases that actually initiates or wakes you up into life to show you, hey, you're missing something here. And that once you come to understand that and you realign with whatever that is, that it tends to actually heal. And that you might call that psycho-spiritual in some cases. But anyway, we'll get more into that later. I just found it interesting that you drew that scenario about doctors saying, spontaneous remission, you know, when in fact they just kind of woke up, I guess. Well, they they did, uh, for instance, though, there was a study done, um, I think it was in late 1980s, um, by researchers up in Canada, and uh, they took 200 cases of spontaneous remission of cancer, and they studied them. And guess what? 87% of these 200 cases had radically changed their diets. Uh, Of the others, uh, they did various detoxification procedures or went on various supplement programs. In other words, 100% of all these 200 people did something radically different to change the equation in their body, and they got well. Right. And, and, and the doctors are mystified. It, it's not a mystery. <laughs> you know. They're always mystified. They don't, yeah. they don't understand the science. They're so far behind the science. It's, uh-huh. it's tragic. I'm kind of curious, uh, 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 Raymond, is uh, why is the medical profession so behind? Why does it seem as though they threw an anchor and they're just kind of moving along and dragging that behind them at the same time? Yeah, it, it's it's a bad. What they've done is they've they've got a situation where they they can't change. And let me give you an example with with cancer, for instance. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, what happens is that the drug companies and the medical people, you know, they 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 have a lot of influence. Um, like here in California, where I live, the um, the, the, the number one you know, campaign contributors is the, the medical association. So in, we've written right into the law in California, the only legal treatments for cancer are surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. If a doctor deviates from that, it is a felony. It's the same thing as robbing a bank. Well, no wonder people go to Mexico. It's a felony. Yeah, Mm -hmm. the doctor can go to jail if he does anything different. Well, where's the incentive for the doctor to do anything different? Right. (laughs) The doctor could go to a a medical conference in, in, in Paris and and learn a new technique and come back and say, wow, I can I can cure cancer. Um, and he's not going to do it because he's going to go to jail if he does. Mm-hmm. So and then the um, uh, you know the insurance companies there are insurance restrictions. Um, the if you have an oncologist who's treating cancer, he is prohibited by the insurance restrictions to tell uh, uh, the, the the patient that there are alternative choices. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so, too bad. Oh, yeah, we've we've got a system that is so resistant to change uh, that even if the doctor knows better, the doctor can't do anything better because they'll lose their license. Uh, oh, wow. And and the, you know, the definition of malpractice, the legal definition of malpractice, is doing something that is not standard practice. Wow. Well, if if you want to make progress. You've got to do something that is not standard practice. Right. Well, that's why you can't make any progress in medicine. And every year it falls further and further behind the science and becomes uh, the average medical doctor today is irrelevant. I mean, they, they are so far behind the science, they don't know what they're doing. I know it's interesting you bring up a point there about doctors is uh, I had a guest many years ago who actually was challenging even Einstein. So it was a 35-year-old Brazilian of all things. And he wrote a book called, uh, uh, 
at the speed of light, I think it was, and he was talking about how he came to be gifted as he was as a mathematician and challenge Einstein's theory. But one of the things that really stuck out in the book is how he was talking about academia and how it holds back. Nobody wants to push forward, even if you have new discoveries, right. to rattle the cages and be chastised by your peers. And it sounds to me like, as what you're explaining is, the medical uh, well, arena know, is just as bad. Consider this. Mm-hmm. All human progress has been based on new ideas. And yet, what is the one thing that people resist the most? A Definitely. new idea. I mean, and there you have it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and and medicine resists new ideas even more fiercely than than do other professions, and so that's why it's so stuck. Uh, and 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 tragically, today, if you're diseased, uh, you really need to take charge of yourself. And, exactly. And, and I had to take charge of myself. If I had just done what my doctors, uh, you know, the doctors told me my death was a medical certainty, I would be dead unless I took charge of my own health. And that's why I wrote Never Be Sick Again, to help other people to take charge of their health. And it's so simple once you, you know, I've, I've, I've reduced it to simple language a child can understand. Mm-hmm. Now, what's interesting, too, for the listeners out there, I'm uh, joined with uh, Raymond Francis. His book is Never Be Sick Again. And uh, what we're going to explore is uh, some information here for you listeners out there that you can take and at least ponder enough to say, well, let's look into this further again. It's all about you finding out, I guess, the right pathway toward health here. Now, you have a triangle here, and it starts right off at the very top of the triangle. And I love the way this works because it's so much common sense that it's hard that anybody that after you read this could actually argue against what you've come to learn. Nobody's now, been first... able to do that, by the way. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Nobody has been able to argue no. <laughs> against it, by the way. I, exactly. I, I lecture in front of hundreds of doctors. Nobody has ever said, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So see, we're on the right track here. Now, the first one here is cellular malfunction. Now, let's go ahead and start, and we'll talk about that, and then move into what that means and, and how that can occur. Sure. Well, what I've done is is constructed a simple system that you can literally teach to a child. And and here it is. Uh, At the top of the triangle, there's one disease. There's only one disease, folks. We give it thousands of different names. But you see, we're all made of these little units of life called cells. We all started life as one single cell in our mother. If all of our cells are working the way they're supposed to, you cannot be sick. You will be in perfect health. You cannot be sick. The only time you can be sick is when a large number of cells malfunction. So there's only one disease, a malfunctioning cell. For instance, let's take cancer. Uh, Cancer is a cell that malfunctions in a way that leads to uncontrollable growth. The cell just keeps dividing uh, without any restrictions. That's what cancer is, a cell that keeps dividing and dividing. Uh, And so what it is, it's a normal cell that is malfunctioning. If you want to cure the cancer, you have to restore the cell to normal function, and then you don't have cancer anymore. It's the same thing with any disease. All diseases are the result of malfunctioning cells. Well, cells malfunction for only two reasons. Either they're not getting enough of what they need to function properly, or they're getting something, too much of something, that is interfering with their normal function. We call these two problems deficiency and toxicity. So there's one disease, a malfunctioning cell. There's two reasons why it malfunctions. It's either not getting enough of what it needs or it's getting too much of what it doesn't need, deficiency and toxicity. And then we've reduced it to what we call six pathways uh, to help the average person eliminate deficiency and toxicity. So consider the six pathways. Let's say you have two cities and you have uh, uh, six interstate highways connecting the two cities. Uh, And if you are traveling, let's say that one city is health, the other city is disease. Um, If you're traveling on all six highways toward health, where are you going to end up? You're going to end up healthy. Mm -hmm. Today, the average American is traveling on all six highways toward disease. All you have to do is turn that around, and you'll be healthy. So this is a simple system. Uh, We teach it to children, literally. 
mm-hmm. and uh, and they understand it and they can act upon it. And so, never be sick again is um, really um, you know it, it'll change your life. Mm-hmm. Now, just to give listeners an idea of what the six pathways are, so they can continue to ponder this again. This is the most important thing: is to be armed with information where you think, "Boy, I never thought about it that way before," which causes motivation to want to learn more. And it's very important because, as I always say, you may have a great doctor and a fantastic relationship, and maybe he's been in the family or she's been in the family for thirty years or seven generations. God forbid we could ever find a doctor that's seven generations old. That would be amazing. But uh, the fact is is that you have to live with your health. Your doctor doesn't. And so that's very important to know that. Now, the six pathways you have here are nutrition, toxin, psychological, physical, genetic, and then medical. Now, why those? Because that's the highways that we travel on, and, and if okay. we look at if we look at you know the cell, and we know that to stay healthy, we have to give the cell what it needs, and we have to keep it free of what it doesn't need. Um, those are the pathways. For instance, the nutrition pathway. Mm-hmm. That's all about giving the cell what it needs. Uh, and the average American today does not eat a good diet. Uh, and if you're short even one nutrient on a chronic basis, you will get sick. The average American is short several nutrients on a chronic basis. So you have to learn how to give your cells what they need. That's the nutrition pathway. The toxin pathway, uh, we've created a toxic environment, folks. You know, we've, we've got tens of thousands of man-made chemicals out there. The, the average American is now bioaccumulating between three and 500 of these chemicals in their body. Well, here's the question. How many of these chemicals can you stuff into a cell before the poor thing malfunctions? Mm-hmm. And we're, we're finding out <laughs> because we're doing it and we're getting sick. Well, learn where these are. Uh, you know, here's the bad news. The bad news is every one of us is in toxic overload today. Here's the good news. 80% of that toxic load is under your personal control. So all you need to do is learn where they are and start avoiding them, and you will reduce your toxic load by 80%. That's worth doing. Mm -hmm. The next is the psychological or the mental pathway. What you put into your mind is every bit as important as what you put into your body uh, because every thought has a biological consequence. You cannot have a thought without there being a biological consequence. And we now know, we now science tells us, that if you have bad thoughts, uh, if, you, if you put stress on yourself, if you, if you have thoughts of anger and resentment and helplessness, this produces chemicals in the body that actually damage you and make you sick. Whereas on the other side of the coin, um, happy thoughts and loving thoughts do the opposite. They give us chemicals that keep us healthy. So we can, we can police what we put into our mind the same way we can police what we put into our mouth. Uh, and I know people, I, 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 know, I know one woman I'm thinking of right now. She was divorced 20 years ago. Do you know what? She still is resentful. She still is uh, harboring all kinds of negative emotions about that. I predict this lady is probably going to come down with cancer sometime soon because she's doing it to herself. Mm-hmm. The next pathway is the, is the physical pathway. And, uh, and here we need sunlight. People are staying out of the sun because they think it causes cancer. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, the, sunlight, the sun prevents cancer. Doesn't yeah, cause try it. getting the plants to argue in favor of that. Fallacy. Exactly. <laughs> Stay out of the sun. You know, you know, we all need the sun. It, that know, oak tree it, died because it lacked the SP35 suntan oil that we had available. <laughs> it's nutty. I mean, you know, the, the, the doctors, I mean, they, they just have no idea what they're talking about. They're mm-hmm. so far behind the science. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need sunlight. You need regular sunlight. You need regular exercise. Now, we never needed exercise before uh, because we did uh, the four-letter word. We did the W word, uh, work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, nobody does that anymore right. uh, except for a few people. And so now we have to do the dreaded E word. Uh, but I'll tell you something. Here's a secret that most people don't know. 
here, if we take a human cell and we give it everything that it needs and we keep it free of things that it does not need, will it work properly? And the answer is no, Mm -hmm. because there's a missing ingredient. The cell needs to be constantly moved and stretched in order to function properly. And that's what exercise is all about. And that's why people who don't exercise get sick because they're not moving and stretching the cells. And, and, uh, and that facilitates the movement of nutrition into the cell and the taking away of toxins from the cell. i got a question for you real quick on the idea of exercise now. It's important, obviously, to exercise, to move the body, get it breathing, but is it possible to become sick from over-exercise? Absolutely. Okay, I thought so because I've seen that consistently. Like, don't you think seven hours of working out is a little extreme every single day? <laughs> yes, uh, and people who do um, marathons and triathlons and, and things Iron like that Man and whatnot, are yeah. doing enormous damage to their body because it produces a flood of free radicals. There's no way the body can handle that flood of free radicals, and they're actually doing damage. See, uh, it, moderate it, it, exercise is best. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to bring up is I was just talking with a friend of mine the other day, and Bruce Lee became the subject. And, you know, there's a lot of mystery that surrounds why he died, but my simple philosophy about his death is, is that I believed he actually lived a full lifespan in the time by the time he was 32 when, when he died, that he actually physically lived, you know, the distance that we should live. I guess, you know, in a body's optimum health, and I've actually heard this from different experts, is the human body is actually designed, biologically speaking, under optimum conditions to be able to possibly live to be about 125 years old. Oh, no, the, 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 the biology journals say that human life expectancy exceeds 135. Oh, does it? Okay, oh, so yes, I stand indeed. corrected there. So much for the science. But most yeah. people say, well, they say it's about 71. But anyway, the point is is that even with an interview with his son, Brandon Lee, he, he said, I can't remember a day growing up that my father wasn't working out. And right. I thought, the guy just, I think, really lived a full life by the time he was 32, biologically speaking. Uh, that's entirely possible. Uh, yeah, and I, okay. I see people doing these triathlons and these uh, marathons, and, and I just shake my head. I, you know, they think that it's healthy, and it's <laughs> not because yeah. they're generating floods of free radicals. So that's the physical pathway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you go into the genetic pathway. Uh, and here the, there's a huge amount of uh, misinformation on, on genetics because people – think that genes cause disease and, mm-hmm. and indeed they, you know they keep coming out on the newspaper they've got a gene that uh, you know does this a gene that does that uh, you know and then nonsense nonsense um, genes are obedient servants and yes we all have disease genes there's no question we all have genes that uh, that are capable of causing disease uh, but they are obedient servants they sit there they do nothing until you instruct them what to do so if you have cancer genes in your body and you go to the gene and you say, please, gene, give me cancer, the cancer gene will bow low and say, yes, master, you can have all the cancer you want. It's not going to argue with you. So uh, it's literally a genie. <laughs> it's literally a genie. It is not going to argue with you. Uh, it's going to give you all the cancer you want. And then if you're unhappy, stop asking and it'll go away. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what genes are they are obedient servants and we instruct them we instruct them with the uh, one of the ways is with our mind by the way Mm -hmm. your mind can alter your genes so those thoughts those negative thoughts can actually activate disease genes Uh, and then the chemical environment you you create inside of the cell the pH inside of the cell, the the sodium potassium ratio of the cell, a, a whole bunch of the the toxins you put into the cell all have an effect on instructing the genes. So um, any of us can learn how to keep our genes in good shape, and that's what the genetic uh, chapter on the genetic pathway is all about. And then finally, there's the medical pathway. Uh, and modern medicine is wonderful. I mean, if you're in an auto accident in America, uh, if you want to be in an auto accident, be in one in America because you'll get the best care in the world. Yeah, trauma is actually very, very uh, highly rated in America. In fact, very, very rated. <clears throat> I know. Uh, 
in yeah. Portland, Oregon, Emanuel Hospital is like one of the top in the nation as far as treating trauma, and, and that's the idea, like you said, those c- catastrophic things that can just happen. So, Well, we, we that's about 10 to 15 percent of medicine, and, and, and we look at this, and we say, oh, gosh, look at medicine, you know, state of the art, you know. Mm-hmm. But the problem is that 10 to 15 percent is state of the art, and the other 85 percent is, you know, medieval. still in a, in a exactly, <laughs> medieval. Uh, and, uh, the bloodlettings are still happening. It, it's in another century. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I once lectured in, in San Francisco to a group of about 350 doctors, and, and at lunchtime I sat with these guys and we were, were talking about, and I said, well, you know, medicine was stuck in the in the 18th century, and, and one of the doctors at the table said, no, 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 it's stuck in the 19th century. And then another one said, no, 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 it's, it, it, it's, it's more like the the you know the uh, uh, the seventeenth century or yeah, we were arguing as to which century it was stuck in you know, and, you <laughs> but know. hey at least you all agreed that it was stuck yeah, exactly <laughs> I mean you know and it, uh, nobody nobody thought it was in the twentieth century and it's certainly not in the twenty first century uh, and we're doing this barbaric unbelievable mm. barbaric I mean you literally it's medieval mm-hmm. torture I mean it's, it's mm-hmm. stupid. Mm. Uh, I mean, where do we ever get the idea that if a, a person is sick, you can help them by giving them poison? Right. And that's what we do. We, we they call them prescription drugs. We don't call them poison, but that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, or, and then if we can't poison you back to health, well, certainly if we attack you with knives and chop you up into smaller pieces, that mm-hmm. will certainly you know, improve your health. I mean, where did we get these ideas? Well, here's the other thing, too, is when you consider you know, the six uh, pathways as you talk about the two causes and the fact that it's one disease is that Although the pharmaceutical industry sets out with generally the best intentions, in fact, one of the reasons they grew to prominence is the fact that uh, they were in a centuries-long uh, showing how to manage pain, and and that's kind of what helped them grow. Aspirin is I still, as I understand, is the number one selling drug of all time because it helps manage pain. But the idea is that they go out and they find what's already in nature, they bring it in, and then they kind of make a little bit of a transformation so it's synthetic, and then they sell it back to as a means to cure a symptom. Well, if that's true, then why can't we learn to go out in nature, find those things that help us uh, have healthy cells, as you talk about, and, and that's what's beautiful about how the book is written, is that people begin to just see the relative common sense of what it means just to be healthy. Well, it is. And, and, you know, let me make a special offer for your listeners on the book. Um, you, can, you can get the book at Barnes & Noble and, and, you know, Borders and, and Amazon. Uh, but if you call my company, Beyond Health, and buy a book, same price you'd, uh, you'd pay at, um, at, at Borders, or uh, buy a book, I'll give you a free one-year subscription to my newsletter, Beyond Health News. This is a paid newsletter. It's one of the top health newsletters in America. And uh, all you have to do is call this number and order a book, and I'll give you a free one. If you you have to ask for it, by the way, and just mm-hmm. uh, uh, and, and say, you know, I, I heard this on on, on Daniel's uh, show, and um, and so we'll give it to you. So here's the number: eight hundred two five zero three zero six three eight hundred two five zero three zero six three. And if you go to my website, beyondhealth.com. There's a wealth of free information at beyondhealth.com. Uh, and right on the front page, there's a button that says free reports. Click on that. Get yourself those two free reports that can change your life for the better. One of them is a roadmap to choosing supplements. i got to tell you, if you go into a supplement store, it's bewildering. You need a roadmap. <laughs> yeah. You need a roadmap. And it's all there free at beyondhealth.com. I think what's even more amazing, too, even though we're running out of time, is to point out that we're seeing our supermarkets now with pharmacies in them. Yeah, yeah, tragic. Yeah, well, it's a way to make so. money. It's a way to make yeah. money, and people <laughs> are taking these things. Uh, uh, I don't take any. I mean, I, I, you know, nobody I know takes any drugs. That mm-hmm. You don't need them. They, they make you sick. You know, there's only two causes of disease, deficiency and toxicity. Prescription drugs cause deficiencies. Every one of them causes nutritional deficiencies, and they're all toxic. So prescription drugs cause disease. (laughs) And the more drugs you take, the more disease you get. 
Well, Raymond Francis, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. Again, the book is Never Be Sick Again, One Disease, Two Causes, Six Pathways. And we want to thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program today. Always a pleasure. Well, thank you very much again. You're you're a delightful and wonderful host, and God bless you for the good work you're doing. For well, you. I appreciate that very much. We enjoyed doing it. So, okay. <laughs> again, thank you for being on the program. Today. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. You bet. I'm Daniel Davis. Be sure, hey, he's got that special offer out there. And again, the book is Never Be Sick Again, One Disease, Two Causes, Six Pathways. It's author Raymond Francis. I want to thank you for tuning in to the program today. And I also want to thank our sponsor, Immunitech. You can create your own future by joining the Immunitech team today. Whether you're looking to replace or supplement your current income, start your home-based business on the foundation of 13 years of double-digit growth and expanding sales. From $50 million to $500 million in the next three years with a winning formula of successful tools and support. At a time where companies are feeling the impact of today's economic conditions, Immunitech continues to expand. This integrity-based company offers scientifically proven health and nutritional products, including 30 years of science. Research behind the flagship product of Munical. Find out how to begin your future today by contacting Peggy at 503-962-0644. Or check out the opportunity at www.immunotech.com slash p Kersey. That's P-K-E-R-S-E-Y. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to visit us at our website at beyond50radio.com and sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter. Thank you again for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway.